Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, count total number of colored cells. Very interesting problem today. It's actually gonna involve a little bit of math and don't worry, I'm not gonna like try to bust your balls or anything. I know a lot of you don't like math, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll realize or at least remind yourself that math isn't a bunch of numbers and equations. It's actually a way of thinking. So anyways, idea behind this problem is pretty simple. Um, we're just given a parameter n. It's gonna be a positive number between one through like 10 to the power of five. So depending on what it is, we want to return the total number of cells in this grid. So n equals one is kind of the base case. We have like one little square. I guess I'll use this picture here on the left. We have that little square. And then for n equals two, what we do is for the original square, everywhere on the perimeter of it, we add another square. So we add one square to the top, to the bottom, to the right, and to the left. And you see after we've done that, this is the new uh, shape that we have. So this is n equals two. And to this, once again, we're gonna do the same thing, add a square everywhere on the perimeter that we can. So we can do one here, do one here, uh, right side, left side, and then also here, 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 and here. So that's eight new squares we could add, and then we end up with this guy. So this is n equals three. So in terms of the total number of squares, we had one here, we had five here, then we had 13 here. So what we want to do is given some number n, some arbitrary number n, it could be bigger than three, we want to get the total number of cells that it will have. If you haven't noticed a pattern just yet, let me kind of do one more cycle. So here, once again, we can add a square to the left, to the right, to the bottom, to the top, and obviously it's getting kind of messy. And now we can add uh, like four squares like this and four squares like that. So to this guy, it had 13 cells. We added 12 cells to it and now we'll have a shape with 25 cells. So I, I don't know about you guys, but this kind of reminds me of like those little math problems or like those pattern problems from when I was like in elementary school, try to predict how many uh, squares the next shape is gonna have. I think I've seen this on like IQ tests and things like that. Do you notice the pattern? It's some very basic math. Well, it's not like super, super trivial, but I think if you're looking for it, you can figure it out. Um, from here, we do a plus four to get to five. So like one plus four, that gives us five. And then to get to 13, we added eight squares to that. So eight, and then to get to 25, we added 12. And so this pattern is gonna hold. To generalize this formula, it's gonna look like this. One plus four times one plus four times two plus four times three, et cetera, et cetera. So knowing that we can code up a solution Basically, we can start our result at one. That's kind of like the starting point. You could think of it as like, well, I guess you can't really think of it as four times zero because it's a one. So that's kind of like, it is a little bit different than the rest of these, but anyways. And then like however many terms we're gonna have here is gonna be decided by N. So we'll have, uh, this is like the first term. So these will be the N minus one next terms. So now let's use this idea to code this up. That's gonna be the linear time solution, but there actually is a math formula we can use using this logic to solve this problem in constant time. I'll show you that right after I code up this one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is initialize my result to one. What I wanna do is return the result. And so there's multiple ways to code this up. I will code this up by iterating n times. And I'm gonna do this for i in range n. So what i is gonna do is it's gonna be every value from zero up until n minus one. So what I wanna do is add to it multiples of four. So I'm gonna add to this four times i. So what that's gonna do is let's say n is equal to one. This loop is gonna run a single time. It's gonna add four times zero to this. So nothing's gonna happen. It's just gonna return one. Okay, well, what if n was two? Then this is gonna iterate from zero to one. On the first iteration, nothing's gonna happen. On the second iteration, four times one is gonna be added to the result. And if it were greater than that, it would take four times two, four times three, four times four, et cetera, et cetera. It's just gonna keep going. 
it'll stop the way Python works. This will last execute on n minus one. I will be n minus one. So I'm just gonna run this now. You can see here, it works. It is a linear time solution, but there is basically like a zero millisecond solution. That's just a math formula. Let me show you that one now. So pay very close attention to what's going on over here. And I guess before I even get into it, this whole solution is going to rely on a very sort of simple formula called Gauss's formula. I guess I can show you what that formula is now. And then maybe after I show it to you, you'll actually know how to solve the problem or at least you'll be able to do the math on your own. But anyways, Gauss's formula is this. It's like you take a series of numbers. It doesn't always have to start at one, but the simple case is when it does start at one, you take a series of contiguous numbers that you're trying to sum together. So we have like a simple series like this, uh, one through four, and like if I told you to sum every number from one through 100, you'd probably run a loop in your mind to do one plus two plus three plus four all the way up until 100. But there's actually a very easy way to do that. I can tell you off the top of my head, I think the answer is like 5,050. And let me show you the equation to do that. And then I'll show you how you can derive it or how to think about it intuitively. For one through 100 to sum all these numbers, what we would do is take 101, multiply it by 100 divided by two, which is just 50. And so if you do that, I do believe the answer is gonna be something like 5,050. Now, how did I derive this formula? Am I a genius? No, I'm not Gauss, but I don't think you have to be a genius to derive this one. Because think about this for a second. To take these numbers, I know that one plus 100 is gonna be 101. I have one pair that is equal to 101, but actually I have 50 pairs that are equal to 101. That's the shortcut because consider this, that was one pair, now I can also do two plus 99. It's like I'm doing a two pointer algorithm in my head almost, think about it like that. Like I have a pointer over here and a pointer over here. This is one pair that sums to 101. Now I shift the two pointers inward and I have another pair that sums up to 101 because I took this number, I increased it by one, I took this number, I decreased it by one, and so now I have another pair of 101. How many pairs am I gonna have total? Well, I had a total set of 100 numbers. So I take that total set and I divide it by two. That's what I did over here. So the general formula, in this case, if we're starting at one, going up until 100, you could say it's gonna be n plus one, where n is 100, uh, multiplied by n divided by two in this case. So like even though, like Gauss, he didn't know anything about writing programs, he didn't know anything about a computer. I think he was alive in like the 1800s. He knew a way of thinking that was quite similar to how programmers think. Don't you agree? That's why I think math is very beautiful. But anyway, so now how does this apply to this original formula that we have over here? Well, in this case, like this example, it, I think n was equal to four. So we had like four terms here. You see that what's going on, like ignoring the first term, then we have one, two, and three. And each of those is being multiplied by four. So you could kind of look at this part of the formula like this down here. So in other words, like this inner part, this can be calculated by just taking like our current term n and uh, subtracting one from it. So if I did n minus one, the reason for that is because like these inner terms are gonna stop before we actually reach n, which is four. So this is how many terms we're gonna have like inside of here. We can divide that by two, which is gonna tell us how many pairs we're going to have. And then we can multiply that by what is the value of an individual pair going to be? Like you take this and you add these together and it's four. That's not really a coincidence because we would always take the largest number that we have, which is gonna be n minus one, add one to it. And that's gonna tell us what one pair is gonna equal. So n is gonna be the value of a pair, it's gonna be the sum of a pair. This is how many pairs we're gonna have. You divide that by two and then you get this formula. And we see that that only tells us what's inside of these parentheses. You take uh, that whole thing and you multiply it by this four that we had out here. And you also take the one and you add it to that. And this is 
the general solution that you get. You might think, well, how do you know this is actually going to work? Because inside of here, we have an odd number of terms. Actually, that's fine as well. Because the like middle term, if there is a middle term, if there's an odd number of terms, there's guaranteed to be a middle term. The middle term is always going to be half of the sum of the pairs. So the pair sum was four, the middle term is two, so it is half of the pair. So that's why if this were to be an odd number, if that were to be like 1.5, it still works out. I'll run the formula in front of you right now to prove it. Let's use a different color. So I have one plus four times n, which is four minus one divided by two times four. And there's a lot of simplification we can do here. So I think this is gonna be 12 divided by two, that's six times four, that's 24 plus the one, and yeah, we get 25. Isn't that the number that we had originally? Yes, it is. Like if you take all these up, add them together, you are going to get 25. It's not magic, it's math. Now, if you wanna simplify this function further, which you really don't need to to solve this problem in constant time, you can. I think you can simplify it slightly more to be one plus uh, two times n minus one times n. I guess that's fine as well. But either way, like either of these you use, the time complexity will be the same. Let's code it up. So there's not really much to watch at this point. I already told you what the formula is, but in case you want to keep watching, go ahead. Uh, one plus four um, multiplied by n times uh, n minus one. And I think we can divide either of these terms by two. It doesn't really matter which one of these is gonna run first. Whoops, let's make that a two. So I think this'll work. Yes, it does. Here on the left, you can see. And then we can also get rid of this divided by two and then turn this into a two, just canceling out one of those factors. And then that'll also work. Yep, as you can see here, it works pretty efficient. I really had a lot of fun with this video. I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.